Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 12th of February. Budget 2021 provides strong stimulus, looks at long-term growth, says India's finance minister in parliament. Vice President Saleh blames release Taliban prisoners for rising violence in Afghanistan. And Buddhist community across India celebrates Tibetan New Year, Losar. And now for all the details. India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman in her reply to the discussion on budget in the parliament said on Friday that the government had made an attempt to provide strong stimulus this year to revive the pandemic hit economy. She blamed the opposition for creating a false narrative that the government only works for crony capitalists. India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman on Friday said that the government had made an attempt to provide strong stimulus this year to overcome the impact of the coronavirus Thank pandemic on the economy as she responded to the discussion on the union budget in the parliament. Speaking during the last day of the budget session's first leg, Sita Raman alleged that the opposition was creating a false narrative that this government only works for crony capitalists and said roads, electricity and direct cash transfers do not go to the rich. They go to the poor, whose cause Prime Minister Narendra Modi champions. And giving stimulus to such an expenditure, the capital uh, creating expenditure, creating infrastructure, is one of the main features of this budget, especially that it is coming after a pandemic. The other, as I said earlier, not losing out on this opportunity of the pandemic, continuing with reforms. In the union budget presented on February 1, Sita Raman proposed doubling health care spending and lifted caps on foreign direct investment in the vast insurance market. The budget also focuses on infrastructure spending as well as plans for bank recapitalization, among others. The death toll in Uttarakhand glacier burst tragedy in India climbed to at least 37 on Friday after one more body was recovered from the riverbank near Maithana village. Rescue teams continued drilling operation in the Tapovan tunnel as there was a possibility of human presence there. The death toll in India's Uttarakhand glacier burst tragedy rose to at least 37 after one more body was recovered from the riverbank near Methana village on Friday. Meanwhile, rescue teams resumed the drilling operation in the Tapovan tunnel to gain entry into a smaller tunnel which is 12 meters below the existing tunnel as there was a possibility of human presence there. The operation was temporarily halted following a rise in the level of water in Rishi Ganga River on Thursday. New machines have also been joined here and in Reni, the team was working on the dead bodies in the dead bodies. Now, there was also a lot of civil workers who have also joined here, dumpers have also joined here, so that will be faster. And now, we are doing a team of people in the dead bodies, so that if there is a dead body in the dead bodies, it will also be able to. A glacier broke in the Tapuvan rainy area of Chamoli district of Uttarakhand on February 7, which led to massive flooding in Dholi Ganga and Alaknanda rivers and damaged houses and the nearby Rishi Ganga power project. Moving on, Afghanistan's first vice president Amrullah Saleh has blamed the Taliban prisoners who were released from the Afghan jails for rising violence in Afghanistan. The prisoners were released last year as part of the US Taliban peace deal. Afghanistan's first vice president, Amrullah Saleh, has said that those Taliban prisoners who were released from the Afghan jails as part of the U.S. Taliban peace deal are playing a major role in the rising security threat to the country. Saleh taking to Twitter has said he is ready to prove case by case that the released prisoners are involved in the current violence against people. 
referring to the recent spate of targeted attacks on the employees of the government institutions and the recent attacks on the employees of the Foreign Ministry, Ministry of Ruler Rehabilitation and Development and Ministry of Agriculture. Saleh said that those Taliban members who were released are behind these attacks. Based on the statistics over the past two weeks, at least 30 people were killed in Afghan capital Kabul as a result of targeted attacks and 30 more wounded. Majority of the victims were civilians. The Taliban, however, has denied any role in the attacks. In news from Pakistan, a report submitted to Pakistan's Supreme Court this month paints a dismal picture of most of the Hindu holy sites across the country. The one-man commission led by Dr. Suhaib Sadl along with three supporting members was set up by the Apex Court in 2019. It regretted that the Evacuee Trust Property Board failed to maintain most of the ancient and holy sites of the minority Hindu community, practically abandoning over 280 of them to the land mafias, the report says. Last December, a temple in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa was torched by members of radical Jamiat Ulema Islam Party, which drew strong condemnation from human rights activists and minority Hindu community leaders, prompting the Supreme Court to order its reconstruction. The majority of Pakistan's Hindu population is settled in Sindh province, where they share culture, traditions and language with Muslim residents. They often complain of harassment by the extremists. Moving on to news from Nepal, Nepal continues to witness protests as resistance against the resolution of parliament has intensified in the Himalayan nation. On Thursday, several protesters were injured after cadres and members of the Students' Union of the rival faction of the ruling Nepal Communist Party clashed with police near the parliament in a bid to enter the restricted area. Several protesters were injured on Thursday in Nepali capital Kathmandu as resistance against the dissolution of parliament continued to intensify in the Himalayan nation. Cadres and members of the student union of a rival faction of the ruling NCP, Nepal Communist Party, clashed with police near the parliament in a bid to enter the restricted area, which left several injured. The protest against Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli's decision to dissolve parliament on Thursday intensified with the arrest of a female leader, Ram Kumari Chakri, from her house earlier in the day. While addressing a mass meeting recently, Chakri had made comments over President Vidya Devi Bhandari, which led to the arrest of the leader. Kathmandu has been marred by anti-government protests on a daily basis, which has been growing significantly over the period of time starting from December 20, when now caretaker Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli dissolved the parliament. This move by Oli, which has been called unconstitutional and challenged in court, has split the ruling NCP, led to the expulsion of now caretaker PM from the party. In Bangladesh, the hot beverage culture features an inclination towards tea. People here sip tea multiple times throughout the day. Apart from the classic milk tea, green tea are among the favourites for most of the people in the Southeast Asian country. To the list is also the latest addition, the tandoori tea, which has gained a huge popularity among tea connoisseurs recently. The tandoori tea is deemed unique for offering varied flavours and drinking from a clay cup. In Bangladesh capital Dhaka, it is very hot currently. This special tea is made with additional ingredients, smoked usually in clay mugs baked at high temperatures. With tandoori tea gaining a huge popularity among tea connoisseurs in recent days, Many are visiting the tea stall Bengali Khana at the Savar Bazaar to experience the aromatic drink. <laughs> Mohammed Mamun, the owner of Bengali Khana, has been running the tea restaurant for three and a half months. He says the footfall has risen as people are excited to try this concoction. Mamun currently employs seven workers in his tea restaurant and he says the business is going good. Buddhist community across India on Friday marked the beginning of Lunar New Year Loser. Loser celebration is one of the most 
festive periods of the year observed with a lot of religious, cultural and merry-making events for a week or two. It marks the end of winter and the beginning of spring. Tibetans in exile celebrated the Tibetan New Year Losa, the year of the Iron Ox on Friday, in India's northern hill town of Dharamshala. Losa celebration is one of the most festive periods of the year, observed with a lot of religious, cultural and merry-making events for a week or two. However, due to the coronavirus pandemic, the Central Tibetan administration made a symbolic celebration by offering prayers rather than a grand one. The first day of Loser is said to be Lama or Monk Loser. People visit monasteries, pay respect to the monks and receive their blessings. In northern Shimla, people dressed in their traditional attires, visited Dorje Drang Monastery and observed prayers as part of the celebrations. First of all, I want to give all the people a happy Loser. आज वैसे तो हम लोग को बड़ा सेलिब्रेशन तो नहीं है आज लोसर सेलिब्रेशन का दिन है और टिबेटन कैलेंडर लूनर कैलेंडर के हिसाब से आज जो फीमेल आयरन ऑक्स इयर्स सेलिब्रेशन बुद्धिस मार्क द फेस्टिवल एस अ विक्ट्री ऑफ गुड ओवर इविल एंड इट इस सेलिब्रेटेड विद रिलिजियस फॉर्वर टू वार्ड ऑफ इवि� Loser is celebrated among Buddhist communities in India, Nepal and neighbouring Bhutan. Several temple elephants from across India's Tamil Nadu have checked into a 48-day rejuvenation camp in the southern state where they are given bath, fed herbs and undergo health checkups to reduce their stress levels. The elephants spend most of the year in restricted environment of temples, so the annual camp offers an environment similar to their natural habitat. Temple elephants from India's southern Tamil Nadu state earlier this week checked into an annual rejuvenation camp in the woods of Coimbatore. During the 48-day camp, the large mammals will spend their days in the forest, taking relaxing baths, gobbling their favorite delicacies and will undergo regular health checkups. The animals are deeply revered in India, where temples often have a resident elephant, which is believed to bring good luck and fortune. Throughout the year, they are staying in the temple only, where they are in a restricted place. But this is an open, naturalistic environment, similar to the natural habitat of any elephant. So every year, we are conducting the next camp for 48 days. The elephants spend most of the year in restricted environment of temples, so the rejuvenation camp offers a comfortable atmosphere to the jumbos, after which they usually gain weight and their happiness level goes up. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Budget 2021 provides strong stimulus looks at long-term growth, says India's finance minister in parliament. Vice President Saleh blames release Taliban prisoners for rising violence in Afghanistan. And Buddhist community across India celebrates Tibetan New Year, Losar. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.